Hey, everybody. I am very excited for this chat today with Eraka Networks, a true innovator and disruptor in the SD-WAN and SASE space with Renuka, Chief Product Officer. How are you? I'm doing great and great to be here, Ivan, with you. Uh, looking forward to our chat. I am as well. And uh, I've been following you guys for many years. Started out in SD-WAN. Uh, with, with so much uh, a change and disruption happening in that space. And now we're going to talk about the future of cybersecurity as well. Maybe before that, introduce yourself, your role at Ariaka, and your mission uh, within the company. Absolutely. So I'm Renuka Narkarni. Um, I am the chief product officer at Ariaka. And uh, when I joined Ariaka, my mission was to bring Ariaka into the SASE space and build world-class, state-of-the-art uh, architecture that provides integrated networking and security. I have spent 20-plus years in the cybersecurity industry. I have built pretty much every single kind of technology that's out there. And um, as a security practitioner, one of my challenges always was how to enforce security across all the different network access and not having network control or access to the network, that was like the number one challenge where the security products were, it was always difficult to deploy them. And you may have the best security, but if you cannot enforce it, it's actually really uh, not of much use. So Ariaka was the best opportunity to really truly combine networking and security to provide consistent and ubiquitous security with a very high, uh, high standard. So that was what my mission was. Um, at Ariaka, I'm responsible for the vision and execution. So I have product management, engineering, cloud operations, as well as marketing, where we truly, this is really bringing our dream of SASE to life. So truly setting up the vision, making sure that we execute to our vision, and then we are able to uh, communicate and um, you know share with the customers what it is. Wow, that's fantastic. What a tour de force. Uh introduction to start. So this is an important time for you and the team. You've launched your unified SASE as a service, which is a big deal. You know, talk about where that fits in the landscape of offerings out there in the industry, uh, what the service entails and its, its significance. It's kind of a big deal. Absolutely. So the vision of the company when we, when we were founded was really to solve the network connectivity at a global level. So mm. we wanted to be the best performance low latency, no packet loss. And that was the mission where we wanted to connect all the users, no matter where they're coming from, to the applications. And interestingly enough, over the course of the period of like, you know, last decade, we saw so many massive macro trends that in fact make that, made that mission even more critical and more, uh, more useful. So what we ended up building was a global private network. We think of it as a highway on the internet. And mm -hmm. it is zero trust by nature because you can't get on our, on our private network unless we know who you are. Mm -hmm. So as things were evolving, as, you know, COVID happened, there were re remote users, hybrid workforce, uh, you know, applications are now in the cloud, in SaaS. So the enterprises were going through this massive journey of, you can call it digital transformation or modernization. And that actually played really well in terms of Ariaka's investments and Ariaka's journey uh, as we evolve along with our customers. And uh, not to mention the attack sophistication has been increasing. There are always new attack surfaces. And that's why it's, it's not really what security technology that you have. It's really, can you enforce the security at the right place? Can you get it closer to the source where you know, the actual problems are? And, and I think that's where our focus is. And what Ariaka has built, uh, as I say, it's a state-of-the-art architecture. We have uh, a global private backbone. This is zero trust by definition. And then we have overlaid different kinds of security service on, services on top of that. So think of you had a very fast internet highway. Now we are putting checkpoints and cameras on top of it. So, so we think of, we do three things for our customers. One is networking, which is the best, fastest performance. The second one is absolutely foolproof security. And I would just touch upon this because I'm a technologist at heart. So. Mm -hmm. One of the fun stuff I saw over the last couple of decades was there were two camps. There were people who did NGFW, stateful inspection. And then there were people here who did proxy, who were like SWG, SWIG, whatever you call it. And really, when you wanted to do a broad spectrum 
you chose stateful inspection technology and when you wanted to do a specific deep application security, you went down the path of proxy. So what Ariaka is saying is you don't actually have to make that choice or you don't actually have to split that because the architecture that we have built is actually, we call it one pass architecture, which is we provide all the networking services from the get-go. Those networking services then get into what kinds of access control can you possibly do, user-based, application-based, IP, all of that. And typically, stateful inspection is good enough for that. Then we do SSL decryption. We do post-SSL uh, processing uh, with access control. We do threat protection with IPS, anti-malware. And then, of course, in the future, we will do data leakage prevention. Everything in what we call as process to completion. So process to completion, when we get the, the, the flow, all of that is actually handled in the single thing. So we believe we are very, very unique from that perspective. Uh, there is a single pass architecture out there, but the magic happens when, how do you make sure you have the right policies? How do you make sure that you distribute right SSL keys for SSL decryption? And we have hundreds of customers, truly multi-tenant. Our customer has hundreds of sites. How do you make sure the right policies and the right things are um, are deployed at the at the right place for the security processing? So that's the secret sauce, which is unified control plane that we have built. So there's a lot of very interesting technology challenges or nuances that we have solved, and uh, that makes us truly very unique. Uh, and there's one other last point I'll mention, the third point, which is, as I as I said, we try to do security closer to the source. Mm. And when users are coming from the branch office, we can offer the entire spectrum of security to, to, to them right at the, uh, at the CVE there. So unlike most SSE vendors, where you take all the traffic to the cloud for processing, we process it closest to the source. And that has many benefits. A, it's better security clearly because it's closer to the source. You don't know what's gonna happen by the time you take it to the cloud processing. The second thing is it eliminates congestion and performance bottlenecks because now we are able to perform at a global level at the cloud, but then because of the local breakouts, the total amount of traffic that we need to process and the latency that we that the customers and the users have to handle uh, is much lower. So let me pause. I know I said a lot of different things. Uh, no, it's fantastic. I know I have a lot of CIOs, CSOs, CTO followers, and they're really enjoying this content. And um, your enthusiasm is is really infectious as well. Um, to maybe describe how does a client, whether it's an enterprise or an MSP, how do they get started on this journey? It's typically there's a lot of technical debt, a lot of legacy out there. Um, you seem to be adding an easy button a bit with the one pass architecture. Maybe a, d describe how how folks are onboarded and get started. Absolutely. Uh, actually, a very good question. And uh, if you saw our tagline, one of the things we say is you can get it all. And that's where mm -hmm. uh, typically when these kinds of decisions are made in the enterprises, uh, there are considerations for uh, should I compromise my security for performance? If I put mm -hmm. all these extra things, um, you know, what will happen? So there are technology considerations and there are trade-offs between performance and security. And then there are operational considerations, which is where, you know, how do you actually deploy this, right? Which is you may have multiple teams and there's a change management and you always have to compromise between simplicity. How fast can I get things out with mm. less number of approvals and many organizations involved in it uh, versus agility because you need to go at a speed of business. So what our promise to our customers is we 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 make sure that they get it all. You can get performance, agility, simplicity, and security, all of it together. And this is where uh, Ariaka is very unique because we meet customers where they are. So when you think about a SASE journey, when you think about, I want to deploy SASE, where do you even begin, right? So our customers, and this is our experience working with our customers um, over the last decade where, we first recommend you start with uh, modernizing. Like you have to begin with modernizing your infrastructure, making sure mm -hmm. you have access to, uh, you know, the the fast networking, uh, networking bits and pieces, replace MPLS, and have global connectivity and and the basic stuff, right? And um, and then you optimize. So to your point, people already have invested in infrastructure for security. 
you always have a firewall you have a swick subscription so you're not going to drop it and you know you just use something else it's just difficult to even practically deploy so mm-hmm. we have about 600 firewalls that aryaka manages for our customers because wow. they were like hey i already have these you know checkpoint and palo alto and i i do truly believe in sasi but can i you know take one step at a time so we have been managing all these firewalls for our customers we also have something called as cloud connector uh, we mm-hmm. have um, a very large customer an airlines deal cathay pacific that we um, uh, that we announced uh, last quarter uh, they had microsoft defender for their caspi and they were like we have done a lot of work in configuration we want you to work with that so we have a cloud connector and and remember we are actually the network pipe we are the plumbing we are the network pipe so we also do traffic steering so what we do is we can you know deliver the right kinds of security controls within our own infrastructure but we can also send the traffic in the right way with right port protocols whatever your configurations might be to the partner third party products and then the last stage of their journey uh, we call transform wherein now you are ready to integrate more services you are in, you are more comfortable with the way it works and uh, that's truly transformation and all along one of the other things that we have built is we can actually fully manage this for our customers so oh, wow. that's a huge help which is when customers are doing these unknowns and trying to figure out where do i even begin um, aryaka can fully manage it for the customer we also understand that some customers want to do it themselves so we have a portal called as my aryaka and all the capabilities that we have built can be self managed by the customer and and then we have a third model which is called co managed which is customers can't get enough of like outsourcing the networking pieces they are like i don't want to deal with like different geographies and currencies and i want to mm-hmm. work in brazil and in you know um, chile and and wherever right uh, but i don't want to deal with who are the service providers what is the currency how am i what sla mm. so aryaka is a one stop shop in that sense uh, but when it comes to the security people as we all all security people are inherently uh, they want to have more control and they need to know exactly what's going on and uh, and and that's basically where they want to do self service so what we have is very unique it's called uh, co managed offering and we can meet customers anywhere uh, on that path Brilliant. Wow, that was um that, that's quite a variety of options and, and so the customer benefits are pretty clear. It sounds like reduced opex and reduced capex and reduced network expenses, but what what else is 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 that really the the value uh offering as it were? Yeah, so so there are uh, there are some very interesting side benefits. Okay. Mm. I'll tell you about um so we had like three of our customers um over the last 6 months Uh, who were actually subjected to a ransomware attack mm. and the connections between like the the there were actually connections between their sites uh, which ended up becoming we figured it it was a lateral movement but but those things were actually allowed by the security controls so all this traffic was allowed by whatever security mechanisms they had but with ariaka we were like we have never seen these things communicate before what is going on why do we see this extra traffic that we are not used to so i think observability is a very interesting side benefit that we get because the minute you integrate your networking and security stack now you have so much more information that you did not have before so this kind of observability is super unique and that's like like really something you know we can help our customers with as well Uh, and we have a whole data center where uh, we actually capture the flow of um, the matrix of all the traffic that goes through our cloud so that's that's one of the very very interesting as we all talk about ai and you know what we can do uh, we actually have the we are very fortunate that we have that access to the data that now we can do interesting things with it we can share it with our customers and you know they can um, they can take it forward so that's definitely thing one thing other thing is tco uh, we all know about this whenever uh, you are streamlining your operations when you are streamlining you know the appliances and and the network path uh, there's absolutely lots of tco benefits we did a test uh, we did a uh, a survey of our customers and on on an average is like 30% gains um, that people see when they adopt sasi and when they integrate networking and security Well, wow, fabulous opportunity for customers and you guys were an early first mover in the SD WAN space and of course 
uh, dozens of other companies then followed up and are, are active there. Now you're innovating in the SASE space. Well, how do you see the landscape in the market? And, and how do you, I know you're not in marketing per se, but how do you uh, see yourself getting the word out and uh, getting those unique advantages you described out to customers? So one of our biggest, uh, you know, uh, success stories are uh, when our existing customer CIOs, they talk mm. about and they are, uh, it's like a lot of our customers are, when they change jobs, they actually take us along with them. Uh, that is mm -hmm. how we have organically grown. Um, we crossed $100 million organically. And uh, that's something we are super excited about. Uh, and then, of course, we need help from like these kinds of activities where we actually have audience with, um, you know, people who are technologists, uh, people who are decision makers, people who can actually uh, are, are strategic. And that's one of our, our uh, sweet spot. When we talk to uh, the CIOs and uh, CISOs and uh, decision makers who are strategic thinkers, uh, they actually always see the value in not only are they changing the networking layer, they are also adding new security to it, which is in fact more secure because of you know lesser attack surfaces and, and so on and so forth. But really, truly, what as I mentioned, the side effect is all about observability, business intelligence, what can we do better? Um, and there are so many benefits. So we have so many stories. Um, as customers uh, adopt public cloud, they, they find lots of interesting um, optimization opportunities. As they ad adopt SaaS, they found a lot of optimization opportunities. So, so yeah, so this is exactly what we are uh, hoping to do. Fantastic. So I know you've, you've just launched uh, many early feedback you can share from you know, experts within the customers or the industry, how's it going? It's going great. It's going awesome. So we announced it uh, for a GA after we had 40 plus customer conversations and 10 deployments because we wanted wow. to make sure that uh, our thesis actually holds true. So when we initially started back in November, mid-November, uh, we actually started uh, telling our story to our customers. Um, clearly, some of them were our design partners. They were asking us for this for a very long time. So, mm -hmm. so clearly, that was super helpful. And uh, and some of these are just like really simple conversations where uh, their uh, certain products are being end of life. They have appliances which are which need to be replaced. So a lot of these conversations were almost like no brainer from that perspective because it makes so much sense to add network security and um, and networking. And, and we do have uh, some amazing demos that we are uh, we are actually doing a security field day where we are gonna walk mm. through all our UI. Um, one thing I did not touch upon is. Um, the way we built our policy model and we had the benefit of doing this all together, uh, unlike, you know, accommodating the legacy stuff and then adding on top. So because we had the benefit of doing this together, our policy model is super simplified, where when you provision networking, you can provision all these services in one go. So just like you have a one pass architecture for the data plane, a one pass architecture also applies to when we do the policy model and so on. Uh, so we have these exciting demos as well. And we will be at RSA in May. So if anybody uh, of you is uh, visiting there, uh, feel free to stop by our booth and uh, take a look at our demo and talk to our teams there. I would love to talk more about that. Yes, RSA is a fantastic opportunity to educate and network. Um, so you, uh, among others, have responsibility for kind of the forward vision and roadmap. Um, can you give us a peek? I know there's a lot of proprietary stuff there, but any insight into the future, uh, either the industry or, or where Ariak is headed? So I would say, um, as I mentioned, like we are very, very excited by the fact that the amount of data that we are able to collect and the ability to instrument this in our CPEs as well as in our POPs. So mm -hmm. the next sort of, um, so when I look at, like when I started Ariaka, my, my first goal was to make us world-class security, make sure that we have all the security capabilities baked into the infrastructure, built, um, built through and through in our network stack. Uh, my second, like as I go to the next phase of Ariaka, uh, where we are heading towards is really become the best observability and provide the best insights possible to our network in terms of what's going on where. Uh, so that's definitely going to be the next phase for us. And uh, obviously, we'll use the latest and the greatest technologies. We'll we'll try to, uh, you know, get our get our hands dirty with <clears throat> things like uh, AI technologies and and so on. So that's that's absolutely something on in our uh, near term horizon. 
fantastic. And it's hard for companies to change and adopt the latest technologies, and they have a lot of legacy and technical debt, organizational challenges. How, how, how should folks get started, either with you directly or with partners? Is, do you have a, a sort of baby step or one, two, three first steps to kind of move into this new world of SASE and, and uh, observability? Yeah, so we have three steps that we have aligned. Uh, we have we mm-hmm. talk about which is like modernize and then optimize and then transform. Uh, we mm-hmm. are a channel first company. We have um, uh, we have actually very close relationships with um, most of the top channel technology mm-hmm. trusted advisors. Uh, in fact, I was in Vegas last couple of days. We were at CP Expo where mm-hmm. we met with our largest channel partners, and we are actually training their SEs. And uh, they are the trusted advisors to a lot of companies. Mm. So, so they definitely play a significant role in handholding the customer, giving them the right guidance, uh, you know, uh, chalking out multiple different steps that you need to take as you get through this SASE journey. Well, it's such an exciting journey and the value is, 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 is so evident. What are you excited about? You mentioned RSA over the next couple of months. Uh, what are you excited about travel-wise, professionally, personally? What's on your radar? Next week, I'm actually heading to our Bangalore office and uh, oh. we're going to celebrate our uh, our SASE launch with the extended team. Uh, and then we have some very exciting news that we will be sharing in April. Uh, so taking the step forward in terms of the deployments that I just talked about, you know, we started with 40 customers and then we had mm-hmm. uh, some of them deployed and now some of them are at a point where they are in production. So in April, we are looking to bring in our customers who are um, already in production, as well as some of our partners that I talked about, uh, who are our channel partners. So we'll have some very exciting announcements happening there. Uh, but but that's really that's really um, what we are looking forward to. Well, congratulations on all that, and uh, thanks so much for spending the time here. Really intriguing, interesting, insightful conversation. And thanks everyone for watching. Reach out to your ACA uh, for more info, comments, questions. Uh, Thanks so much, Raduka. Thank you so much, Yaman. Okay, take care, everyone. Bye-bye.